very important what Terry just mentioned is the fact that a lot of us are in a transformational and transitional change because we're dealing with our parents mm -hmm. who are getting older. All of us carry around this bag, if you will. Mm -hmm. And this bag is constructed of everything, of all of the generations of every place that you've come from, known and unknown. Mm -hmm. So now we're at the opportunity to create our own bags. Right? You get to choose your own fabric, which is your identity. You get to pack your bag with new things and new learnings that are important to you, if you understand what those are. You get to keep some of the things that you've come with, and then you get to now say, this is who I am, a very important piece with the identity piece that you were talking about that you do at work. I think that's critical, what is happening with young people, and there are many stages to that. It's not going to be solved in groups like this. You've got to find a process, whether it's through an organization, or it's one-on-one, -on -one, or through books, however you're going to get it, and you're going to get it, because that's why we're here. This is like a divine appointment. So you will be seeking and searching for that piece, and it's going to show up for you, but you've got to do the work. It's critical. When it gets hard and challenging, keep pressing forward. We know how to do that. We've come from that. And yes, we're talking about humanity, but we're also talking about ourselves as African people. Yeah. And we've got to cling to that identity and then push through that. We always knew about humanity. We welcomed everybody. So we're not going to leave that. But we've got to stay rooted in a piece of identity that looks like us and then move out from that place to begin the healing work. And we're starting to do it. We've got to reach back and we've got to go forward and then pull together inside, and that's what solidifies the inner work that we are doing. When I looked at this community politically and said, okay, I am not a quote-unquote politician, I'm an activist, and I'm, I'm a minister. How do we do this? We look at the community as a family, a whole construct in that way. And we can take care of a lot of business because we are flying and running and living and being. We're in the deep end and we've always known how to swim. Some of us have not done so well, but the majority of us have because we're still here. So no, step by step, inch by inch, slowly we turn, reaching our hands together, we can do this. So find your process.
in the way that men deal with each other, what are what are the checks? Like what checks do you give? How do you check each other? And um, you know, like dealing with that sort of behavior. And um, so I'm also a single parent, and my um, But, um, <laughs> how, how, men check, how men check each other? You know, more on the different talks. So, like on a day to day, you know, when you're on a basketball court, or you know, I and maybe because I'm a woman and not privy to that, you know, I don't see it. But I sort of, I don't, I don't feel like I see men checking each other. With that kind of behavior, like they're allowed to go on in society. It's sort of like it's, it's, it's reductible, sort of in a way, you know. How, how do you check one another? Good question. Um, well, that is a very good question. And I would argue that that's one of the, that, that it's, much, it's much easier to get up and make a speech or be on a panel discussion and talk about it than it is actually do it with an intimate friend or close personal friend or people that you know. And I've had the experience of doing both. And, it, and it's, it's not easy. It, it's, it takes, you have to be very skillful in how you do it. And you have to be very, like, um, you have to be very careful that you that that you are um, offering a critique and advice, but also not being judgmental and not pushing somebody away and, and, and maybe coming across as if you're better than that other person or that you know you're being self-righteous and all that kind of stuff. So I think that you have to develop a skill for, for how to um, successfully engage a man with his issues, right? Um, and, I, and I think one way that, that I have um, been successful doing it, it has, has been like acknowledging my own issues, right? It's like kind of just talking about, you know, when I was in a very similar situation and I did the wrong thing. And this is where, where I ended up. This is how it affected me. You know what I'm saying? You don't necessarily want to go down that, that path. Do you? Or giving that person the space to answer his own question or the, to address his own issues, right? Just by asking certain questions. And I think that, you know, that develops a skill. But in situations where it's not so intimate, it's not necessarily a friend, maybe a stranger, I think that, you know, you have to develop a, 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 a level of courage, right, to, be, to actually be able to speak up and speak up against what is normal, accepted behavior, right, and put yourself at risk. Is that a cute party? Yeah, I got so <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a lot of stories. Just, just real quick, you know. Yeah, so, 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 um, but you got courage, though. I was in a room full of bros, my frat brothers, right? And Chael, I know you can identify this. Kevin, you, you in the church? You know, you know. And you know, it was different. You know, yeah, you've got in a different situation with different people that met. And you know, so. It was all this conversation. It was bra talk. It was Q talk. You know what I mean? Where the bitches at? Where the hoes at? You know, um, where's the, we got the groom. Where the bitches? You know what I'm saying? That kind of conversation. And I had just started getting into my gender violence prevention and all this kind of stuff. So now I'm feeling all this inner conflict because this is what I do. I talk about, you know, speaking out against violence, against women and sexism and language and all that kind of stuff. And literally, I'm in a room for about 15 to 20 brothers who are all in agreement for how to talk and act and be. And I said something. And it took, it took me a minute to say something because, again, I had to have the courage to do it, right? And when I said something, I was completely isolated in the room. Completely isolated. And in fact, somebody actually threatened me. It wasn't a direct threat, but it was an a indirect threat. And that person said, I've seen bros get thrown off the ships for saying things like that, mm -hmm. right? Getting beat down for saying things like that. So in other words, it was an attempt for him to silence me, right? And so I just continued, you know, I just continued. And then when I, when I realized that it, got, it, was, it, it was to a point where I was not going to be, I was completely outnumbered, I just left. I just left the room and I left the environment. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, and there are other, you know, similar situations like that. So when I'm out on the road, I'm talking to young men. I always encourage young men to listen to their to their voice because I think.